we went to Tampa. One of my boys lived there. He's a baller. He does a few million a year. He asked me to be on his podcast. And when he was on his podcast, he said something to me that really struck me in a different way. He said that his mom asked him, was he happy? He said he thought about it. He said, I'm not optimizing to be happy. I'm optimizing to get money. I don't really think about if I'm happy and I'm just trying to get money. Then he said to me, are you happy, Brandon? He said it like he expected me to agree with him. And I was like, yeah, man, I am, bro. Their happiness and making money are independent of each other. They're two different things. You can be happy and make money. You can be sad and make money. You can be happy and poor. You can be sad and poor. So when people say money won't make you happy, I'm like, yeah, it's not supposed to. Dumbass. Being happy can make you money. It made me reread a book I read called Scrum. And I just want to read you a section of this. Happiness leads to success in nearly every domain of life, including marriage, health, friendship, community involvement, and business. And study after study shows that happiness proceeds important outcomes and indicators of thriving. The author of this book is a consultant who works with a ton of big fortune 500 companies. He also like government organizations like the FBI and stuff. Well renowned, one of the best business consultants in the world. And what he does is with, with businesses, when he goes in, he does something called the happiness matrix, where he'll measure the happiness levels of each employee from scale one to five. And then he puts the averages on this chart. So check out this purple line. This is a screenshot from the book. This purple line is the average happiness of the people in the organization. Here's the thing. What he noticed was it's a predictor, right? So this is this velocity. This is like revenue output, how much money they're making. Once they got the happiness up, you can see revenue and everything started to go up. But also once the happiness started to drop almost right after the income level and productivity level dropped. Happiness can make you money. I'm gonna go back to what the author said. People aren't happy because they are successful. They are successful because they are happy. Happiness is a predictive measure and performance improves even if people are only a little bit happier. They weren't happy because they made money. They made money because they were happy. Here's the studies to back that up. Cause you, you can see this when he says right here, happiness leads to success in every domain in our lives, including marriage, health, friendship, community involvement, creativity, and particularly our jobs and career, he has footnote there, right? And that's to this study that supports his claims. This is a huge metadata study to show that people make more money when they're happy. Let that sink in. You don't make money to become happy, but if you are happy, you will make more money. I really hope you're getting this. Happiness is a predictive measure and performance improves even if people are only a little bit happy. This is very important. Happiness is an emotion. What is an emotion? Emotion is nothing but neurochemicals firing in your brain. That's all emotion is. When people have bipolar depression or something like that, means there's something wrong with their neurochemistry. Emotions are biological, like it's happening in your brain. What does that mean for you? Well, let's just say we got this guy. He a bitch. He's always complaining, always sad. It's his average. And here's the thing. Your average state is your personality. So he has a sour personality. You ever met one of these motherfuckers? Do they make you feel better when you're around them? Or do they drag you down and make you feel like trash? They have a negative energy. And what happens is people don't like this. It's like a repellent. Like want to stay away from this motherfucker. Can't wait to get away from him. It's scurry. And, they, and it becomes self-fulfilling. And let's say you got another guy. He's positive. Every time you see him, man, he's upbeat, talking about pulling and shot calling and shit. You know what I'm saying? Talking about doing dope shit. Are people running away from him? Have you ever met somebody like this? You probably feel better when you're around him. They probably uplift you. He has typically a more positive state. Real quick, man, who do you think, if they were doing a sales job, these salespeople, which one would you think would make more money? Who would you rather hire? Who would you rather work with on a project? Who would you rather go into business with? This is why happy people make more money. If you have to do a sales presentation, if you're in a shitty state, what kind of outcome you think is gonna happen? When you have that happy, positive state, even if you perform the same actions as a guy who's pissed off all the time, you're gonna get better results. Nobody likes negative people, it's a repellent. But positive people, everybody likes to be around positive people, man. Positive people, they make you feel good when you're around them. And they get more money as a result. They get more everything. I'm telling you, man. Everybody likes to be around them, man. Because energy is contagious. That's why people like dogs. Most of the dogs I see, they seem pretty useless. Unless you own a herd of sheep and you're trying to keep them safe from wolves. They're probably not working. 
on your land or anything but what they do they improve people's state because dogs are always happy dogs be excited as fuck just to go outside dog run up on you <laughs> and you start feeling all good and shit we're like children when a toddler walks in the room and he's holding a paw patrol or something smiling and laughing everybody the whole room lights up and this asshole walks in the room <laughs> everybody's uh they feel bad is this making sense this is why happy people make more money. They're luckier. Here's the thing, emotions are nothing but neurological cocktails going off in your brain. Serotonin, dopamine, testosterone to a certain degree, the oxytocin, these neurochemicals fire off in your brain, but you can control them. And there's three ways to control your state. I'm gonna get into that later. If it can't be measured, it, it can't be managed. That's what Peter Drucker said. So you gotta measure it first. Everyone says they wanna be happy, but I don't know, let's take it seriously. If that's what you say is true, then let's take it seriously. So what I did was, guys, Here's the thing. I have bipolar too. I don't have to take meds because I learned how to manage it with what I'm going to teach you now. But let's say you don't have a mental disorder. This is going to work even better for you. So if you really want to be happy and you don't need to make more money to do this, I don't want you to make money to be happy. I want you to be happy and make money. All right. Be happy fucking today. So I would take a piece of paper. I carried around this little notebook This because this was before iPhones were out. And I would make a graph on it, mark it from one to 10. Also marked like the time. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, right? So I'll just mark the hours of the day that I'm awake. And then every two two hours or so, I would just mark where I'm at on a scale of one to 10. So 10 would be example, the way Drake felt when the Raptors won the NBA championship. A one would be a guy who's like seriously like suicidal, right? Like he, he might need to call the suicide hotline. That's one, 10, Drake watching the Raptors win. So I would just mark where I was at, man. I would take notes of peaks. And I also take notes of the lows every few hours. Boom. Now, then I had a nice little graph of how my day went. And, and the, the thing is, everybody's emotions are going to fluctuate throughout the day. So it's kind of weird when people say they want to be happy. What the fuck do you even mean, bro? Do you mean you want unbroken, perpetual happiness for the end of time? Do you mean that you never want to feel a negative emotion again? I don't think that's what they mean. They mean they want to be in a higher emotional state on average. All right, let's find out what the average is. So after I would do this, you can add it up and you can see what the average is. Boom. That yellow line would be like my average. Six. Not awful. Not great. And I think that's what people mean when they say they want to be happy. They want to raise their average state. I hope they don't mean that they want to be happy all the time. They want their life to be an unbroken boulevard of green lights and they'll never encounter any situation that would affect them negatively. I hope that's not what they mean because that's an uh, unrealistic standard to hold yourself to. So you have two states, like states of, of being. You have your momentary state that can change any moment. Then you have your baseline state or your average. The yellow line represents my average. The, the blue dots represent my momentary state. First thing I did, instead of just trying to be positive or trying to be happy, I just took notes of where the lows were. So if there was a super low, I would mark Y. You know, all the lowest points, I would just mark Y. And I just tried to get rid of the lows. Just doing that over time, like reducing the lows, waking up late would be a low for me because I wouldn't get as much stuff done. I noticed that being hungry would put me in a low state, right? So I just tried to get rid of the lows and just doing that raised my average. Not even trying to be happy, you're just trying to get rid of as many lows as possible. Sometimes I've dumped women, I dated because I looked at the graph, I looked at the data, and I was like, yup, too low. If the hoe too low, she gotta go. Then I started to try to pay attention to the highs once the lows are gone and try to optimize those. So I noticed, okay, when I'm making content, I feel real good. When I'm coaching my students, I feel real good. Let me do more of that. I found reasons. I wasn't trying to hit a 10 all day long. That's an unrealistic expectation. I'm trying to just increase the average. And then what would happen was I do this whole thing again. Now the lows aren't as low and there's more highs and not as many lows. And it was gradual. And I was doing this when I was broke. I think this is why I'm fucking balling to the data. And now I have a way higher baseline state. I don't know how you do that without the data. When you get the data to show what's making you happy, what's making you sad, you try to put more of that. It's also the fact that, remember, the emotions are nothing but neurochemicals firing in your brain. It's all they are. And if it's biological, that means you can train it. The same way Steph Curry, he doesn't have to think about dribbling a basketball between his legs or something. He's trained his nervous system to react a certain way. You can train your nervous system to feel an emotion and just train yourself to be in a certain state more often. And you gotta track it to see how you're doing. So it wasn't even about, I wanted to make money to be happy. Yo, I've been happy. If you watch some of my old videos, man, I'm fucking happy. 10 years ago on this, I wasn't a multi-millionaire then, balling out of control, right? So when people say money won't make you happy, it's not supposed to. But happiness will make you money according to the studies I showed you, the data, and you see why nobody wants to do business or be around 
a sour motherfucker. These people attract even more bad luck, self-fulfilling. But if you can train yourself to be in a happier state more frequently, then you'll get more opportunities. People will be excited to work with you, to network with you, to do things with you. If you're in any kind of sales, it's gonna make it way easier. You can actually change your state at any time. How do you control your state? Boom, there's three ways to control your state. One is with your body. How you move your body affects your state. Some white lady, I think her name is Amy something. She did a TED talk where she showed the studies where they took groups of people, they tested their testosterone levels and their cortisol levels. Cortisol is a stress hormone that your body releases when you're stressed. Measured it before the experiment. And then this is how the experiment went. They had half of them, group A, sit and pose for like two minutes like little bitches. They had sad poses and then they had group B pose for two minutes in victorious poses, looking like King Keto for two minutes. Then they tested their hormone levels. Group A's, the people who were sitting like little pump, their cortisol levels shot up and their testosterone levels actually lowered. Group B's testosterone levels increased and their cortisol levels dramatically decreased because your body can control your actual emotions, not just the way you think it is, but actually on a chemical level, right? The neurochemicals will change depending on how you move your body. So whenever I'm like not feeling real great, I'll go for a walk, go outside, bam, get in nature, you can start moving. Maybe you work out. I used to have a trampoline at my old office in New York. And whenever I wasn't feeling good or I, or if I needed to feel super good for something, if I needed to get myself in a real pumped up state, I jump on the trampoline. I never seen somebody get on the trampoline and not smile. I just ain't seen it happen because yeah, emotion creates emotion, but it's not just like hocus pocus. It, it will actually change it on a biological level. The chemicals in your brain will change depending on how you move your body. The second way is your environment. Most of you probably work better in a clean place than you do in a messy place. It has an effect on your emotions. Or if you're in a place with not a lot of sunlight, you just won't feel as good. It's not just your physical surroundings, but it's also when I say vi environment, I also mean the people you surround yourself with. Like we talked about earlier, like if you're around this asshole, you're going to feel worse. <laughs> you ever seen somebody angry walk into a room? He changes the energy, the whole room. You feel it. But you also see a fucking toddler or a puppy run into a room. Everybody lights up. It might be some of y'all might be around here fucking up people's state with your bullshit. The most important way to change your state, the most powerful is your focus. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel, even if it's not real. For example, just imagine right now, like a family member dying. Go ahead and do it. Dude, you'll get sad. Just imagine it's not even happening. This is shit that's not happening, but you feel it just because you focus on it for a second. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel whether it's real or not. So you got to be real 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 careful about what you focus on if you know me and you spend any time with me i'm always focused on things that are positive and other people positive things in myself positive things about situations because i need to approach these things with a better mindset what that means in practice is like never complain about anything i don't care what it is because you're going to focus on that thing and you're going to feel bad i'm not telling you to be positive i'm telling you don't be negative because you're going to focus on negativity and that you're going to feel different as a result if you're hungry don't say oh i'm so hungry just say man, i can't wait to get some food oh, i'm so tired man nah you need to say i need to get some energy you can't be negative everything you do you got to actually change your language and if you do that and you're tracking it things will change because to get results you got to take actions however the quality of the actions are influenced by your state people don't seem to understand that or they don't take that into account two salespeople doing the same exact thing the one with the better state is going to have better results you ever had an unenthusiastic blowjob that like she just wasn't in she's like oh, all right <laughs> then you had a motherfucker who was scrambling for that dick couldn't wait diving on it like a loose ball at the super bowl yeah they're doing the same action but because they're different states the results will vary i feel like you guys you can get that analogy 